so we're starting this podcast and um i i mean nobody my name is harry um i'm zeros geckos on um, instagram um and aj is uh, agd reptiles and um we met each other uh through instagram and uh we hit it off and it was good uh chatting with aj and um i wanted to do this podcast uh because you know i have a bunch of grow outs and babies and in the meantime there's nothing to do so i wanted to you know just uh, chat with people and get to know the gecko community and uh, provide value where i can and so this podcast is more of a <clears throat> a breeder for breeders you know i'm a newbie i'm nobody um but the two main things i wanted to do is i want to provide useful content for all breeders to learn from and i want to do my part in building out an already strong reptile community and um, how i want to do that is by interviewing people like aj and some other people that are um, known within the community that have been providing um, good animals good content and just uh, has have been really helpful for uh, the gecko world and so i do hope to connect people even if it's just one by one to um, help each other as uh, breeders, as just enjoying the hobby and um, even um, talking about the business and the side uh, side hustle aspect of uh, the gecko world. And so my name is Harry, um, born and raised in uh, California, and I have about um, a bunch of a bunch of kid grow outs. A bunch of them are from AJ. Um, I got into this thing um, not even maybe half a year ago. Um, my daughter, she wanted a leopard gecko, and then I got her a crested gecko for one hundred eighty dollars at the reptile store down the street. And I was like, "Why? Why is this? Why is this gecko so expensive?" <laughs> and then, so that led me to researching um, a bunch of different um, uh, geckos, and uh, I YouTube this this one uh, video. AJ, it was um, from Brian at Altitude Exotics, and he sold this exantic for twenty three thousand dollars, right? And so my mind was blown and I was like, no way, like there's no way, right? <laughs> That's impossible. And so anyway, that, that led me to just uh, follow a bunch of people on Instagram and I came across you, AJ. Um, I think um, a lot of these top readers I was following and I came across this uh, Q&A, a bunch of Q&As with you and um, Gabby at uh, Morph Menagerie. And I was like, this is a chill dude. Like I'm going to, I'm going to talk to this guy. Right? So, so I reached out AJ and we were just chatting on Instagram and, um, it was, it was really good to just meet you and chat with you and how down to earth you were. And, um, and I think that really disarmed me in terms of just being, well, I'm just going to ask this guy, whatever. Right. And uh, so yeah, we've been chatting, awesome. right. We've been chatting you and I for quite a while back and forth. And this is our first time meeting, uh, virtually, um, at least in person, virtually, Face to face, and uh, so it's been really good to meet you. So you doing all right, AJ? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for the thanks for the great intro. I appreciate it. Yeah. And hey, yeah. you keep saying you're a nobody, but everybody starts somewhere. So don't don't <laughs> get too true. down on yourself. That's true. Uh, I'm, yeah, man, I'm, I'm good. What's in your? How many years in, AJ? Are you into the gecko world? <clears throat> um, gecko like crested geckos specifically. Oh, well, reptile I think world. I'm, yeah. Uh, reptile world probably like twenty. Wow. Uh, okay. Ish, maybe like a little more than 20 years. And then Crested Gecko yeah. is like 17, 18 years. Okay. Okay. So, I got you. Yeah. A little, little while. So yeah. Yeah. You could say um, it's been a big part of my life. Yeah. <laughs> two, yeah. two thirds of my life have been <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, uh, how old are you? cohabitating <laughs> with Crested Geckos. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So where were you, uh, where were you, where are you from? Where are you born and raised and where do you live yeah. now? And a little bit so, about yourself. I'm from a suburb of Chicago called Crystal Lake, Illinois. Uh, was born and raised there. It's about 50 miles northwest of Chicago, kind of near the Wisconsin border. Yeah. Um, grew up there as a small community, um, suburb feel. Yeah. So was there yeah. and then now currently reside in North Carolina, kind of central North Carolina. Nice. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, you know, I, I was asking you before we started the recording how tall you are because I realized, <laughs> realized in pictures you're like, you look crazy tall. Like, but I I didn't realize you're that tall. So yeah, it's <laughs> I'm funny five four. I, I'm super short. But. I always make I always make fun of Gabby when we do any of those um, <laughs> any of those things because her 
me sitting in a chair, I'm as tall as she is standing. <laughs> <laughs> I always love to make fun of her and she always yeah, I'm probably around her. Gabby's height, right? Is is she... mad at me. Yeah. yeah. I think she's I don't wanna I think she's Yeah, like no, five, we won't guess. Five one, one five two. One. I think, got it. Got she's yeah. Gotcha. And then Brett's pretty tall, I'm I'm guessing. He looks pretty yeah. tall. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. Brett's he's probably close to six feet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. No, that's <laughs> awesome, man. Um, so, you know, besides the geckos, I know this is like infused into your life, uh, yeah. very well integrated, but what are some other hobbies, uh, you do other things you spend your time and energy on? Yeah, I feel like I have a lot of hobbies. Um, yeah. I've always kind of been a person that juggles a lot of stuff. So, um, playing music, playing guitar, playing in bands and stuff. Yeah. Um, I play disc golf, <clears throat> which is fun. Is that a big a thing? That. Yeah. Is that a big thing in North Carolina? Or it's just huge in North Carolina. North uh, Carolina is probably in the top three places in the world to play disc golf. Oh wow. Okay. So yeah. It's yeah, it's up there for sure. Yeah, because so, yeah, I had a, I have a friend that just moved there uh, a couple years ago and he just immediately got into disc golf. He's always posting nice. about disc golf. <laughs> yeah. So oh. Brett and I play together and Brian from Sundown Reptiles yeah. and I play together. And so the Gilpins uh, from LAC Herbs, we play oh, together. Wow, okay. so there's like you a bunch all... of disc golfer, uh, Crested Gecko <clears throat> people. <laughs> you, guys, you guys all live close to each other? Um, Brian lives three hours away. Brett and Gabby okay. are an hour and a half. And yeah. then the Gilpins live in Iowa, so not so close. But Okay, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 So those things, I also love to, like anything having to do with like a green thumb. So raising geckos, gardening. Um, house plants, any of that stuff I'm into. So I have yeah. a bunch of house plants. I have a garden. And I'm kind of working on my new house and property as far as gardening and fruit trees mm. and all that stuff right now. Wow. So that's something that's, you know, when you move to a new house, you got to kind of start over on all that. So <laughs> yeah. that's one you of my lot... projects I'm doing right now. You have a lot of land too. So the upkeep must be insane. <laughs> uh, I've got a, I've got a little bit. Of, I've got a small amount of land for North Carolina. A lot of okay. people have a lot of land here. Oh, really? But okay. I've got enough to keep yeah. me busy for sure. Gotcha. I just, <laughs> I just have a lawn up front. Our, our, our a lot is like four thousand square feet. So <laughs> it's tiny. Yeah, mine's bigger than that. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have, yeah. we have a couple acres. We've got like two and a half. That's acres, awesome, so. dude. That's crazy, yeah. man. That's crazy. Enough we to keep move. me busy for sure. You got to move. There's a ton of traffic over here in the Bay Area. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I can't imagine. I just went back to yeah. Illinois and it was um, it's insane, I right? Forgot I forgot how bad the traffic was. Oh. And meanwhile, I live in a town of like three thousand people and just wow, just nobody. Okay. So it's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, do you guys even have Targets and Walmart's there? Uh, I do fifteen minutes away, but okay. the town I live in is like small. But I live close to five hundred thousand people. So. Okay. There's okay. everything you could want within 15, 20 minutes, but in my yeah. little, in my little, uh, safe Haven, it's very small and we have a subway and, um, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's like nothing, a gas man. station. So man, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. We got like, nice. we got like four targets nearby. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy over here. Yeah. Um, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah. So, you know, in terms of like the hobby, um, I'm sure, you know, as a kid, you had owned like a lot of reptiles and things like that. But how'd you get into mm-hmm. it? Uh, what made you start selling geckos and uh, or animals in general? When when was that? I'm sure that was at a young age. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I think I always kind of had I've always had kind of a entrepreneurial spirit mm. within me. I was always kind of looking for ways to make money and there was something that I wanted. My parents would often give me uh, the challenge to figure out how to pay for it. Yeah. So uh, I think that that kind of created something in me that was like looking for opportunities to be able to like monetize stuff that I did. Um, and it wasn't like geckos were, a, oh, I just saw it as an avenue to make money. But anything that mm-hmm. I did, like if I'm going to spend a bunch of time doing something that I'm passionate about, yeah. I should figure out how to how to at least not lose money on it. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um back in the day when I started buying crested geckos, like 2005, 2006, wow. they yeah. were 
not very expensive. Um, they they yeah. started off very expensive, right? When people um, bought them like in the early to mid nineties, I think, you know, a, yeah. go, a going price for like a pair of Krusty Geckos was $3,000. Wow. Um, and then it kind of, you know, they bloomed a little bit and the price came down. So when I was purchasing animals, like the bare minimum you could buy them for was maybe like 125 to $150 okay. was um, the cheapest I could find them. Yeah. And Were these quality geckos? How, how did they look? I'm just, I'm super curious. Yeah. So there was a kind of a mix. This guy that I um, purchased them from had gotten his original stock from Rapashi, yeah. um, like most people did yeah. at that point. And they were kind of a mix. I remember there was like a yellow tiger. <laughs> so kind of like a yellow based tiger. There was like a, a dark animal that had some flame pat, like a little bit of side patterning, but dark base kind of flame precursor to a Harlequin. Yeah. Um, there was a partial pinstripe, maybe like a 40 or 50% pinstripe. That's how we used to classify wow. them is like, what percentage yeah. are they? Ooh, oh, a seventy-five percent. Whoa, <laughs> yeah. like that's yeah. crazy. Ups oh, yeah, you know, eight bucks. Yeah, eight eighty percent. Whoa. So, yeah, um, yeah. this guy was selling them. I think his. I, I met him at a show, and he was the only person selling Crested Geckos at this show mm. um, back in the day, and it was like the the most consistent show in Illinois uh, at the time. So I know there was a couple other people that bred them in Illinois, but they didn't go to any shows, so I didn't know about them yeah. at the time. Um, so there weren't very many breeders back then. No, 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 no. Okay. There wasn't. There wasn't many people doing them in in any sort of quantity. I would Got say it. Yeah. there was people that had some, but it wasn't like nowadays where you have thousands thousands of people that have hundreds of geckos yeah, that didn't that's crazy. exist. Yeah, so, I'm curious how that blew up too. Yeah. So when I yeah. uh, when I went to his house to buy my first geckos it was like all right here's what i have and i'm like great i'll take all of them yeah <laughs> and it was seven seven geckos that wow. i bought. so yeah. and then the next year was just kind of doing what you're doing i had a bunch of 10 gallon tanks yeah. tipped on their side with clips on the screen yeah and uh just fed them you know mm. and at that time there wasn't any pangea <laughs> or rapashi so it's a lot yeah. of insects and wow. mixing of calcium and vitamin powders and meat oh, and, man. and uh, fruit baby foods and <laughs> oh man you know it's just kind of yeah. figure it out along the way so wow <laughs> man that's crazy so I mean when you when you bought these seven geckos it was you were going to breed them to sell is that yeah mindset? okay yeah I mean I was at least gonna I was gonna breed them I did you know yeah. my thought was. Uh, obviously I would have to sell them eventually. Um, yeah. but really I just wanted to make different color combinations. And that was mm -hmm. something that was, um, that was something that just needed to happen. I needed to, yeah. to be able to get yeah. some like different variations yeah. to be able to breed together, to make colors that were different. So, yeah. um, selling was just kind of a natural, like, oh yeah, I'm going to sell them. Uh, they seem easy enough to produce and yeah. I knew that there was a market for them since there was nobody else really doing them. So I started vending shows like yeah, two years later um, and my original person that I had bought Crested Geckos from stopped with them completely. <laughs> so for a few years, I was like the only person. Wow. Uh, okay. In my area, yeah. at least in like yeah, yeah. the Chicago area, going to shows and selling them. Um, with any wow. uh, regular, you know, appearances, there'd yeah. occasionally be one or two pop up, but I'd be showing up to shows with 20, 30, 40 geckos every month. So Would people actually come in, buy them like you did. Were you pretty? Yeah, oh, yeah wow. it okay. was the early the early days. Uh, honestly, were easier to sell uh. <laughs> geckos <laughs> than now because yeah. there was Every, everybody's there was, a breeder now. Yeah. yeah, everybody. Yeah. So if you if you go into the the Midwest or the Chicago suburbs and talk to breeders, odds are 
if they've been around for a while, they probably have a gecko that came from me at some point. Wow. Okay. Um, I believe it just, just because yeah. there was, there wasn't many people doing it. So yeah. just kind of, yeah. uh, early days, you know, I said, it was funny that I was at a Tinley park show. Yeah. Um, in what is it right now? So it would have been the March one. I saw somebody selling a gecko with my handwriting on it and a tag <laughs> from like 15 years ago. No way. So as they were selling no a way. gecko that they had bought from somebody, this this tag had floated yeah. for 15 yeah. years and it somehow stayed with this gecko. <laughs> it was, and it it was, was your like, tag. And it was this, uh, there was this like senior citizen uh, female <laughs> crested gecko uh, that wow. had somehow continued to, yeah, they yeah. had held, held onto the tag. So yeah, funny. there's you still a bunch tag. of animals out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody has a has an AJ uh, gecko. <laughs> yeah, or or one that's related to it, probably. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. So I mean, so I mean, back then you didn't have Facebook or Instagram or anything, right? So you just vended a ton of shows. Uh, where did yeah, you go to, like, then, to build that community? Was there an online presence? Yeah, there was. Um, so back in the day, pre, so the bit where I would say a lot of this started, as far as the community, was the Pangea forums. So before Pangea Reptile ever made a diet, yeah. sold products, any of that stuff, it was a online message board. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it heard. started just as a message <laughs> board um, to discuss primarily, I think it was primarily geckos. I mean, there yeah. was another forum called Geckos Unlimited um, run by Nathan Hall, and that was kind of all gecko species. Mm. And uh, that was that was a larger group, but Pangea was really niched into New Caledonian geckos. So that was where a lot of um, buying, selling, discussing kind of took place. And then um, there was other places you could sell animals like kingsnake.com, fauna classifieds, these kind of um, archaic websites to post yeah. ads. It was kind of like yeah. the the like sale section of a newspaper that's kind of what it was got, so it, got it almost like a craigslist you just scroll and look at like one picture ads or no yeah. picture ads and just say like female crested gecko for sale email me at this and there'd be no pictures mm. <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> so yeah. it's a random bootleg gecko <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so it was just a different yeah. time you know yeah yeah so now they have Mar morph market and a lot of people sell on you know, Instagram and Facebook, right? So yeah, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's come a long way for sure. Yeah, <laughs> how big is your collection now? In the, you started with seven, you know, back then. Yeah, um, how, probably how like pictures? consistent. I, how big is it now, and how big is it going to be next year? Is kind of a different question. But currently breeding, I think I have like fifty female crested geckos. Wow. And then there's, um, I have, I breed some gargoyle geckos, some yeah. Saracenorum, uh, some lychees, cave geckos, Australian geckos. Um, chewies? I don't have any chewies. Wow. Okay. Okay. I don't. I'm too colorblind yeah. to see what they look like. So <laughs> I've had them and sold them because it just didn't work for me. Oh, uh, because they're harder to. I just can't see. I can't see pink, green, red. Oh, oh you're legit colorblind. Yeah. I, oh, so it was oh, okay. Chihuahua oh, okay. were wasted on me. I love them as a as a species. They're super yeah. cool. Yeah, they're I super love mellow, growing right? them up. Yeah. Um, I love them as an animal, but I just I feel like yeah. I couldn't actually breed them successfully for the yeah. for I couldn't create the ones that people would probably want because it, I can't see what they look like. <laughs> i'd be just oh, throwing man. ones together that are horrible <laughs> some random ones yeah I, yeah. yeah i know a lot of people are looking for the, the high whites right white coverage everywhere um, yeah but yeah okay oh so no so chewies man. oh interesting <laughs> no che no chewies right now no chewies so oh, um total total animals at the house i would say kind of flows between probably like 350 to like 700 wow kind of depending That's on crazy. the time of year yeah yeah. Right now, I'm probably in the like 600 range. Oh man. So yeah, I'm are busy. you? Are, are you the only one that uh, takes care of them? Currently, yeah. yes. I'm looking oh, for man. a part-time person, but <clears throat> yeah, uh, that's crazy. Yeah. If yeah, I were there, yeah, if yeah. we live close to each other, I'd I'd be there, man. 
I do it. I do it for free. <laughs> just to Divine just to down. hang out with Come you. Come on down. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, man. So wow, it's, it's, it's good. It keeps me busy. Um, yeah. A lot of it is just being able to k- take care of that many animals. Is just having systems in place and yeah. the right type of caging and all that stuff. So. Yeah. I mean, do you get do you get tired of it? Um. It's been, it's been so many so many years. Honestly, the care part, no. Mm. Um. I mean, like anything else, there's certain tasks you don't want to do. Like when you come back from vacation or something, the last thing you want to do yeah, is go yeah. clean gecko we'll bins for them. like 14 hours straight. Yeah. But yeah, that, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to go and like rake leaves or do, you know, do some other, it's just a, a repetitive task. So yeah. No, yeah. I'm not tired of it by any means. I mean, I think okay. if okay. I'm kind of a person where when I, when I lose the spark for something, I'm kind of out of it and on to the next thing so the fact that i've continued this long uh is a good sign (laughs) yeah no man that's awesome what makes you what makes it exciting still is it the fact that you can um you're still creating there's a lot of creativity i feel like within yeah um breeding geckos to create something that you want is that kind of what drives you yeah i think the creative side and the just ever evolving like I almost think of like the gecko breeding operation, all the room and everything as like an organism that I'm constantly trying to kind of figure out. Mm. Um, just because, you know, you get season changes and um, temperature changes and humidity changes. And then uh, if you ever change caging on animals, it's just you're always, there's always something to do and there's yeah. always something yeah. to figure out. Um, and work on. So I like the project aspect of nev- no days the same almost yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, when you get to, <laughs> when you get to having a bunch of different species and, you know, Fridays are a day where I just like dig up eggs and yeah. Yeah. like do kind of miscellaneous tasks and Monday, yeah. you know, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday are days I'm feeding. Uh, Got it. So it's like I have different things I do on different days. So it kind of keeps it fresh for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. When I was yeah. uh, when I got into it, too, I was interested because I, I picked up this bootleg um, gecko. I shouldn't say that. It was a, it was a gecko. And uh, it's like this uh, um, tiger, like dark base. It was like, it's kind of it's funny. It's, it's right there. But um, and it's a cute pet. But I was like, oh, man. And then I started looking at, you know, Instagram and, and in you guys' animals. I was like, how did it get from this thing to that? And yeah. that made me think like, oh, it would be so cool to kind of fuse different things. And I, yeah, the project aspect, I think, is kind of exciting, right? Um, yeah. And so that's, that's kind of the what thing that, that is one thing. I think that's something that's consistent. If I think about like hobbies that I have yeah. is creative and like yeah. creative yeah. ventures. Yeah. I've always kind of, I've been creative, but maybe not... Um, traditionally creative right 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 so a lot of people are like they can paint or they can write you play music Um, though that's creative that's i play music yeah yeah yeah. so there's a lot of creative that's more more traditional but i would say that i'm more i like to envision something and then create it and i like things that take a long time that's kind of like a trend yeah it's like i like something that <clears throat> oh, in five years, this is going to be awesome. I see. You know, Man, it takes, so you have you have a good amount of patience for, I do. for projects and things that come come along. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like the long term um, projects that really take some. I don't know, some vision to have. I mean, I, yeah. I, I always tell my wife, you know, I'll tell her, oh, I'm thinking about doing this. And she's like, oh, we'll just do it. And I'm like, in this business that i'm in any decision i make is really like what am i gonna do in two years three Mm. years yeah because i have to like if i have a vision for an animal i want to produce i have to find animals to breed to produce probably the first generation then i have to raise all those and then i have to breed those animals to then create like the first gen of the project yeah and no. so just to even get a starting point, I'm looking at like three, four years on some and stuff that I'm interested in. So Yeah, yeah. No, that's crazy. But I love that. Yeah. So. Do you feel like you're able to stick that through in terms of, or yeah. you're like, oh, never mind, scrap this one. And No, I'm pretty patient. I, okay. If anything, I hoard animals and have too many yeah. projects. Yeah. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, man. I'm not really one to like yeah. dump something early. Yeah. No, I guess. Unless you. the animals are just not anywhere near the quality that I thought they were going to be. I see. I see. In that yeah. case, I'm like, oh, these ones didn't work. But before I sell those, I'll probably either create something better or buy in something better. Oh, I see. Uh, How often do you do that, by the way? How often do you buy in animals to fine tune your lines? Prior to last year, almost never. Wow. Okay. Everything um, was in house. Yeah. For the most in house, for I didn't buy animals, I traded for okay. animals for a long time. And I would still say to this day, the nicest animals are traded. Like Got the it. top yeah. 5% animals rarely are sold for cash. Got it. Wow. They're traded yeah. between breeders because yeah. people, the things you want as a breeder from somebody else, they don't want to sell them. The only yeah. way you're getting them out of them is to offer them something equally as tempting. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so I did a lot of trading yeah. for like 10 years yeah. with a few good friends of mine, like LAC Herps, Kakani, De Kakani Dazed, yeah. um, Kyle and Crystal, and uh, Derek Dunlop. <laughs> I bought some animals from Derek. I don't know if we ever traded. Um, yeah. But yeah, just really kind of bringing animals in like that and then just refining projects over time. Okay. So kind of outcrossing, creating some animals that I liked or breeding animals that the offspring I was happy with mm. and then maybe trading to get uh, a mate from that. That was relatively unrelated as gotcha. far as I knew. Yeah. So, so it must be hard to break into, you know, those special geckos that morph that you really want, right? Unless you're well um, invested and integrated into the community um, already. That... Yes and okay. no. I mean, to create the absolute like top one, two, three percent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you can buy a lot of really nice animals. Oh, I mean, yeah. You're sure. really, yeah. you know, you maybe the top one animal that comes out of a pair gets traded. Mm. But number two is sold. And number one and number two are very close. I see. So, and then as it produces more kids, you'll you might hit a gem. Yeah, right? I mean, so, okay. Honestly, the the one that is that is you know the number two animal out of a pair is going to produce just as nice of offspring mm, as the mm. number one. It's just people kind of want to have number one and as nice a showpiece. Thing. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So for sure. it's really not of yeah. of lower value. That's why I tell a lot of people there's there's some sleeper animals out there from mm. the best pairs that are just. Yeah third best or the second best yeah, offspring yeah. out of that season so yeah i bought a, a couple of babies from um a few breeders that like i i saw the parents i was like oh man these are these are beautiful animals <laughs> and so i bought yeah. them but it was it was the you know it's like the runt or whatever <laughs> it has like <laughs> some spot all one. over it it has like a weird base but i'm like yeah it's like it's 300 bucks i'll you know, yeah let's see I'll what happens a chance it, you know it. yeah 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 so um um yeah yeah, so it, so it takes quite a while for you to kind of fine tune um, yeah, your, it's a your long, line and get what you want. Yeah, it's a long. Uh, if you really think about it, like I talk, I talk a lot about this with my friend Brian at Sundown. Yeah. Like we're ba we're glorified farmers. That's what <laughs> we are. Not not in like a not like a, oh you know we're running a. a a, a feed mill or something but yeah we yeah. are farmers in that we're like watching the environment and we're managing kind of what the animals get to eat make sure their nutrition is good yeah. and and the weather affects us and all these different things mm. it plays into it um and like a farmer like each year a farmer gets one chance to plant corn right oh yeah if it's yeah. if things go wrong you get a chance next year so mm. like a career farmer only gets 25 30 tries at the thing that is their job and yeah. we get even less than that because a lot of these geckos take two and a half years to reach adulthood so yeah. if i really think about how many generations have held back you know seven or eight wow yeah um so it's it's crazy when you think about that like 
uh, if things don't go right, like you're <laughs> waiting another two years. <laughs> Man, that's tough. Yeah, that's tough. This so, is where patience comes in for yeah, yeah. For the gecko, I think it's gecko, really uh, a hobby. Yeah, it's really a hobby for people that are patient. Yeah, because yeah, I've seen no, a lot I, of people come and absolutely. go over the years that I think mm, don't have that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm just I'm just here twiddling my thumbs as I'm feeding the geckos. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be another two years, guys. <laughs> That's fun, man. But, I like yeah. I like doing that. That's yeah, fun. no, it's exciting though. Um, and so you're in the stage where it's not like an overwhelming amount of work, and yeah. it's just like you get to yes. like look at all of them every day and enjoy them. all. Yeah, I have I have five <laughs> good eggs. I think two of them might hatch <laughs> this nice. month. That's awesome. So, I, probably from one of the ones I got from you. Um, I got this, awesome. this lily white. This really nice lily white from you. Um, yeah, the red I, yeah. one. Yeah, the red one. Yeah, that project that that really projected me into like um uh really looking at um yeah, you know, like the different tiers of geckos. Um yeah. what's nice and what's not. And I was like, wow, this <laughs> yeah, these are some nice geckos. Yeah. Um and okay. so yeah. What are you currently working on in terms of uh the morphs you're looking for, the things you're trying to fine tune? Yeah, so um, there's, I mean, there's so many things. I would say a big focus is I'm really kind of assembling my Super Dalmatian project. Uh, okay. Um, and working on that, kind of getting different males and females, but just really trying to find like cornerstone males mm. and and getting the nicest stuff I possibly can yeah. um, on that. I'm trying to take some of my yellows and really infuse some of the stark white that people get on tricolor animals into the yellow stuff. Yeah. Um, so doing like orange and yellows with real stark white on them mm. is something I'm working on. And then obviously like the tricolor stuff is really hot right now and has been for a long time and probably will be forever. So oh, yeah, working on that. Um, man, two red, like red patternless with portholes. I've got a bunch of animals kind of in that vein. And I'm just talking about crested's, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. So I'll probably I feel like you that. could, yeah, yeah I feel like you can have like a whole crested. Yeah, I feel like you have a can have a whole podcast just talking about the morphs and how they come about, right? Yeah, because I'm interested in that. I'm 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 wondering how certain things come about. You know, I was talking with you earlier on just through chat um, on Instagram, and uh, and then you're telling me like what goes well with what, and then made me think like mm -hmm. why, right? Why does this pair well with this? Um, mm -hmm. And so I feel like that'd be a good discussion um, in the future. <laughs> yeah, and like other stuff, I just so at the floor of fauna. Flora, flora fauna conference yeah i just got um a visual xanthic male wow. so i'm starting that project. was that, that your first one yeah it's my first one so wow okay i know I'm you're shopping for some hats and stuff um yeah. so that'll be good and i'm gonna make some hats and you know i'm gonna try to do some different stuff with that too everything that yeah. everything that i do i really want to my aim is to do something different i like to yes. do stuff differently than others and maybe approach yep. it a different way. Um, and so I don't, I, I wouldn't say I have like the flashiest animals, but I like to go about it in a way that's not just buy the two that look the best that right. are trendy and breed them together. I, right. right. Because then often <laughs> I've seen this shoot me in the foot where yeah then people don't want to buy your animals because they're related to everybody else's. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather like try to do something slightly like a little bit off from center yeah. so that all the people that bought all those animals can ha buy something from me then. Yeah. So, no, I think, yeah, I think that's really interesting because I mean, even for me, I'm just trying to make sure my, my geckos survive. <laughs> and yeah. so I'm not even thinking that far up into like, what are these things going to produce? Um, you know, I gotta ha have a bunch of, um, Harleys and tries, but, um, yeah. I, at the end of the day, you know, it's probably just going to produce like what a lot of other people have. And, um, so I like that you are already thinking about how can I make it different and better or, yeah, or like just I'm unique, thinking right? about in advance, like the, the Dalmatian project, everybody's aiming for, um, everybody's aiming for like white base yeah, yeah. and big spots. 
but I know a lot of people that have a lot of those animals. And in three, four years, people are going to want animals that also have orange bases or yellow yeah. bases because yeah. everything's going to have a white base. Yes. So I've seen it happen where there's people latch onto a trend and abandon everything else. Mm -hmm. And Got then it. suddenly people want things that they can't get anymore. Like I see yeah. people buying yeah. tigers for like $500 and people wholesaled those until like last year. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> man, a $20 gecko yeah. became a $500 gecko once nobody had them yeah. available. That's crazy. So, yeah, so I'm, that's that's just uh, goes to show how how much foresight and experience you have in terms of what's coming up next and kind of the trend of how things move. And um, yeah, I I, I don't try. I, I don't <laughs> have that at all. <laughs> I don't claim to have the magic or uh, yeah the the magic touch or the the magic insight into what is going to yeah. happen. But you know, yeah, just experience, I, right? I've seen a lot of trends come and go, so I can kind of guess at least what things will remain and then what things yeah. will probably kind of fade out. But if you, yeah. if you just picked one thing and did it forever, there'd always be people that would be mm. into it. Like it. you could say, yeah. I'm just going to do yellow base patternless animals. And if you were the best at it, you'd sell every single one you made. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, there really is not, there's not one path that's the answer yeah so yeah yeah that's tough because like uh, given that it takes like two years for these things to grow out and uh if you abandon that project and move to the next one then you have to restart over and i feel like yeah. uh you know so it can it can be all over the place at times right yeah totally yeah yeah so you know for for your hobby how much of it is a hobby versus a business is it like in terms of your mind um mindset of how you view the thing is it mainly I'd a hobby is it mainly like, a business or is it both i'd say it's like half and half i mean okay yeah i don't think in any unless i like the only scenario in which i wouldn't have reptile pets is if i lived in hawaii um <laughs> yeah. which might be might happen in like 30 40 years <laughs> um, Hawaii's amazing yeah i love hawaii and i've been Dude, beautiful. a couple times um, but yeah. you can't bring anything over there. So that's yeah. like the only scenario in which yeah. that would be a possibility. But other than that, I think I'd always have pets. I'd always have, mm -hmm. or I'd always have like passion projects. I'd probably yeah. always have five pairs of crested geckos that were crazy. Yeah. Or, yeah. So even now, I mean, I have little projects. I have some tree frogs and I have like some muroplatus that... Mm. you know i'd never expect to like do anything crazy with and yeah so and then my plants like the all the house plants and stuff is like i don't it's just fun for Are, me so yeah also you're big into plants as well you have a lot of house plants uh, i'm not like big into it but uh i enjoy it yeah i'm probably yeah. bigger into it than i think i am but <laughs> gotcha <laughs> i have like a plant room so yeah oh wow that, pro that probably says pretty something, good. But... yeah <laughs> dedicated just to plants <laughs> compared to yeah. others like i compare myself to people that have like massive greenhouses i'm like i'm not that oh. big into it <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. No, i got gotcha. you um so do you find it uh hard to maintain it as a business or do you feel like you have a good enough um like you're you're pretty established right so yeah. in terms of the business like if, if we're talking about the business side of things right and uh some people do it as a side hustle and i find mm -hmm. myself you know like texting or you know messaging people on instagram and just asking like very bluntly like oh how many breeders do you have how yeah. much money do you make and not to like pry but i'm just curious how this side hustle works right yeah um and so um, what does that look like for you as far as um how you ask... how to maintain it in terms oh. of how you grow your business yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> I'm going to give a lot of advice that I don't personally follow. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I just am not, I like, I hate social media and I hate technology for the yeah. most part. Um, but really, I mean, the people that are killing it are like really on top of their Instagram game. Yeah, that's true. Um, and if I did more of it, I would probably be doing better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also yeah. have to like balance my own sanity. And yeah. so, you know, how I found a, my way around that is like 
doing some of this like live YouTube stuff mm. and doing shows and selling on Instagram. Most of my, well, not selling on Instagram, but corresponding with people yes, on Instagram. Yes. Yep. Um, and a lot of that is just inbound, like posting animals, people sending messages, yeah. send them to the website, like, hey, go check out the website. I've got stuff on there or whatever. Um, yeah. I think Morph Market's a really great tool. I think the user interface is horrible for sellers, but mm. um, yes. I think for buying animals, it's probably an effective tool. It's just really hard to use for somebody yeah. like me to manage between like that and your website and yeah like it's almost like you need another person to manage all the the social stuff right i know it's like i need to hire somebody i need to hire somebody to do that more than i need to hire somebody to take care of stuff (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. Uh, would you if it did i mean let's let's say you were like the social media genius and you love that aspect like would you be able to maintain um the operation side of it in terms of you know like all the sales versus the the main uh, husbandry and all the maintenance there's only so many hours in the day. So yeah, I think you can either, I don't know, you can either, you could do like half as many animals as me and do mm. more gotcha. social media. Yeah. Or you could do the same amount of animals and hire somebody to do social yeah. or hire somebody to do animal care. I just don't think you can do all the social and the shipping and the cleaning and the breeding and feeding yeah. and everything. Yeah, it's not, po- it's not um, possible. Unless you want to work yeah. like a hundred hours a week. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> which I don't. Do you feel like you, I mean, like going off of that, do you feel like you have a good balance with your number of animals and having yeah. that work life balance of just spending time with your wife and family? Yeah. Right now, okay. I feel like I'm in a pretty good place. I do feel like I need some more time to do things like social and just like content for web um whether yeah. that's like yeah. youtube or that's instagram or you know whatever other sources um that's one thing where i'm like it's probably more just discipline doing doing the thing scheduling it and um getting it down because i realize i take a lot of photos on my phone during the day and just like send them to friends like I just yeah, need to yeah. stop doing that and just take photos for my Instagram and they yeah, can see, yeah, them, see them there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause I have an army of animals that are very nice, but I just am so bad at taking Man, them. That's crazy. Taking the time to do it. <laughs> Not yeah, like I no can't problem. take photos that are quality. I just, I, you know, it just takes it's a while. my own personal weakness in the business. So yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, always yeah. kind of has been, mm. that's not been my mm. strength, my whole career. So Oh, gotcha. How many how, how many hours do you feel like you spend on average during the week? Um, care is probably like twenty five. Care and feeding is probably like between wow. cleaning, feeding, egg collection, checking on animals, setting up babies, cleaning bins, <laughs> cleaning cups, all that stuff. It's probably like twenty five. To maybe, you know, some weeks more. And then probably every other week I'm doing some kind of like a show or a yeah. auction or something like that. So that takes a bunch of my time. Um, and then shipping takes a good chunk of time. So yeah. I would say I'm at like full time plus a bit Got as it. far as the Got hours it. that I'm devoting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think if yeah, you're doing, if you said that you were doing as many animals as me and, and working like 10 hours a week, I would say you're probably taking really bad care of your animals. <laughs> that sounds so, about right. You got yeah. hundreds of geckos, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, do you feel like, you're... like an hour a day. Yeah. That's not yeah, possible. <laughs> are you, are you planning on growing it even further? Yeah. I think that, um, I think I could go. I could go a bit bigger because I'm doing some stuff to optimize um, caging, spraying, um, feeding, stuff like that, where I think I can open up some more hours. So I probably have, I could probably add 30% capacity and, and keep the same hours probably. Okay. 
you just have to automate some stuff, right? Do you have, yeah. do you, you don't, I'm assuming you don't automate your misting. Or do I'm you? going I mean, to in, okay. in the end of summer. So I'm getting oh, okay. a system okay. put in on all of my um, adult Readers. caging. Yeah. So that's like 140 you. PVC cages will all be on wow. misting. Okay. Yeah. I saw this one. Um, I think it was uh, Gecko Galaxy where they interviewed, um, was it LAC? And yeah, I saw so his, I'm getting the same system, system as as Andrew. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, that's crazy. And then I saw, um, you know, um, Brian from Who's Gecko, and he kind of he had like a smaller setup where in the back he also like automate automates his misting and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I I'm realized you don't have that yet. Yeah, I with, with all your well, geckos. Honestly, prior to moving to North Carolina, I had um, I'd always I'd ran it more like a side hustle, right? So yeah, yeah, everything was kind of like uh scrappy yeah. and like yeah. i wasn't dropping tons of money into caging and all this different Got stuff it. it was kind of like you know breeding stuff in rubbermaid t- sterlite tubs and yeah hot, which right. animals do great in by the way yeah there's nothing yeah. wrong with it He's it's just great. you know yeah. i'm like oh man you know for it's if i'm gonna spend all day in this room i want it to be a pleasant place for me yeah you know that makes sense. So that was kind of the move to that. So I, I'm just coming up on a year in North Carolina. I feel like the rooms are pretty good as far as caging, but now it's, mm-hmm. now it's time to automate stuff even further as far yeah. as spraying and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah, um, that's kind of the phase I'm at. I've got like 500 pounds of cork bark in my garage. Oh man. So yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> Got to use all that when I put all the misting in. But right now it's kind of set up kind of like I used to do tubs with paper towel on the bottom and fake plants yeah. and a lay box and, mm-hmm. you know, a hide and different stuff like that. Um, but the cleaning to keep that up to date is, is a lot of work. So, yes. Yeah. Because animals spread, yeah. you know, they dip their foot in the food and then smear <laughs> it all over the paper towel. There's, there's like and, poo on the poo on the front doors all yeah, over the Yeah, and then they get mold yeah. everywhere and you're just like, yeah. oh. So. And you have to do that hundreds of times, hundreds of times cleaning everything. Yeah, up. so. Yeah. I'm surprised you, you know, did it for so Anything long I can do to reduce the amount of cleaning and spraying and things will allow me to um, do better marketing and like, yeah. And take better yeah. photos of my animals and honestly just like focus on the projects more and be more creative in my mind as far as what I want to work on. So yeah, I'm trying yeah. to give myself as much time in the day to, to do other things. So. Yeah. Is your, is your plan to stay a uh, one man operation? Would you grow it to, I'd say like you know, one to three. Okay. Okay. Like, so your, your long-term goal is to hire a couple people to help out. Probably two part timers. Got it is kind of the long-term goal but past that i don't really want to be i don't want to be some huge operation personally yeah um yeah i love hearing that by the way i I, if i can't take care of the animals myself like if i'm completely Mm. removed from that part then i don't even want to do it like yeah i don't want to be a gecko farm that doesn't even that i don't even get to see the geckos or take care of them or like at that point, I'll just go get a corporate job. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, AJ. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why I'm drawn to you because because you actually, you actually like your animals. You know? I do. I yeah. like they're not just they're not. Just and you have like a lot <laughs> dollar signs to me. I I yeah. like the yeah. animals. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. it's really apparent how uh, how much you like the hobby and how much you like helping out people. And so this yeah. is why we're having this conversation. Yeah, I love. Such a good I dude. love the interactions it shows and like just yeah. all the people it's very personal business um good you know good and bad to that but mm. if you surround yourself with good people then it's then it's awesome so yeah yeah do you find within the gecko world the community um most people seem like they're pretty cool and down to earth like the people i've interacted with are there some yeah some bad bad people that you've come across yeah i mean like like any any hobby you're in there's always people that are not great yeah but typically those people aren't around for very long so yeah that's true yeah just kind of i would say my general approach has been just 
do my own thing. I have my friends. And yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. it. I feel like yeah. if you try to be friends with everybody, you'll probably get burned by somebody. Yeah, yeah for sure. For <laughs> so, sure. And then yeah. just having real kind of strict rules. Like I don't, I won't loan out animals to people I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, just a lot of that stuff. If you don't put yourself in a yeah. position to get burned, typically you don't. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you feel like you have a pretty good radar in terms of people and interacting with people. Or are you pretty? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Open. I mean, okay. I. Uh, it's also just great to meet people. Like, I, yeah, I've met a bunch of new people down in both in the south and in like the east coast. That I was in the Midwest before, so I knew all those people. But just meeting a bunch of people from new areas has been awesome and. I've made a bunch of new friends. So, I, yeah. you know, I'm sure that there's great gecko people everywhere. There's great gecko people in the Bay Area, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um there's great gecko people in Florida. There's, you know, there's people everywhere. So, mm. that's what I've learned is just, you know, you'll find the right people. Just be we'll around and yeah. you'll see somebody and you're like, "Oh, I think we'll be friends." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that sounds right. You know, there's some people you just chat and you're like, oh, I get along with this guy and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hang yeah, out and chat. Totally. Yeah, so no, that makes sense. Um, you know, if you didn't do geckos, what would you be doing? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably be doing some other creative thing in an entrepreneurial way. Got it. So like I've considered, I really like to cook. I've considered like yeah. doing culinary school and doing a food truck. I've considered awesome. um, like doing some form of like small scale farming, um, like flower farming or something like that full time. I've considered a bunch of different stuff. So probably yeah. something that has to do with creating and then selling that thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, basically awesome. geckos, but in a different, <laughs> different industry that's very similar. So. Yeah. That makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. You gotta, you gotta scratch that, uh, creativity itch. That just and seems to be surviving. what I'm good at, you know? Yeah. <laughs> For whatever yeah, reason, you... that's my gift set. So yeah. yeah. Um, you didn't go to, you didn't, uh, how did you learn about the business aspect? Or I know you said you always had this kind of entrepreneurial spirit, but was that something self-taught or, uh, I think it was a combination of like, it was a combination of self teaching and and having good parents. Got it. Um, okay. My parents were very good about just teaching me about financial principles and yeah. not taking on unnecessary debt, things like that. Um, working for things that you want, um, yeah. using the things you have to kind of leverage to get things that you want or prioritizing um, prioritizing just how you spend your time and money towards mm. your goals and stuff. So I yeah. would say just a lot of that was good parenting. Um, Got it. Yeah. And also just have been doing it long enough that I've seen mistakes I've made and adjusted. So yeah. combination of good parenting and just making mistakes and learning from them. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, I think Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, it's really, it's kind of simple. No. Yeah, that's simple. Yeah. I got you. And then, you know, for long-term goals, um, you know, you're talking about possibly hiring one or two people and growing the business yeah. aspect of it, but um are you you know, are you is there something that you want to dip dip into uh, whether it's a different species? Um, what are your, what are your like five to 10 year goals for yourself and the business? Uh, and yeah. I mean, I would say that I've really been thinking about the animals for a while and just wanting to make the animals more affordable and reachable for people. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's something that I've considered and obviously I can't just take what I'm doing now and just lower my prices because then yeah. I can't live. Um, yeah. but 
finding a way to find a balance of value for customer mm. that is better value for customer than it is right now. And um, that's right. something that I'm passionate about that I'm working on. So yeah. that's figuring out how to do that and give a better value to the customer than I feel like is yeah. in the market right now. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that stuff is a little bit subjective in terms of like the market and what people value though, right? And so it yeah. seems like you would have to figure out what that looks like in terms of like different tiers of animals. Yeah, um, different without... tiers of animals, different ways of producing animals. Mm -hmm, um, yeah, a lot of different stuff that uh, that I could do. So that that's one thing. Also, some form of additional kind of dry good business. I've been prototyping my own um gecko food for about two years yeah. so wow. yeah. that's on the horizon but i've been really focused on doing things as well as i possibly can having as much testing both lab testing and mm -hmm. animal testing like feeding the animals for a long time on the diet yeah. and witnessing things that i like things that i don't like things that can change um and so wow. that's been something I've been working on for a while and I'm really, I'm really close. Um, but just focusing on the best ingredients and yeah. Yeah. The, the cleanest sources I can get for stuff and honestly, just healthier animals. I think a lot yeah, of yeah. animals are obese yeah. cause they eat too much sugar. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot of fat. So yeah. Dishes. Just, yeah. yeah. So just kind of figuring that stuff out. So I think that'll be a big part of what I do in the future is some form of dry good, um, yeah. lines and offering some, are of you pretty stuff. close to, are you pretty close to, um, going live with that? I could launch it tomorrow if I wanted to. Oh, okay. Um, okay. but I'm doing some final tweaks and changing a couple suppliers and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So not gonna... tweaks on not tweaks on the diet, but like tweaks on packaging and stuff. So. Yeah, got it, got it. Uh, so your your plan is to hopefully kind of mass produce it in a way where you can just sell it wholesale, yeah, like yeah, and at like least Angia or Apache. Yeah, I want to be able to offer it to first and foremost breeders. Yeah, um, yeah. And then <laughs> after that, you know, I want to make sure people like it. So I'm very yeah. committed to like, I'm not even if I put out a diet and people are like, oh, I wish it was a little different, like. I'm very committed to changing it and making it to the point where the community is like, this is the best thing we can buy. So yeah, whatever yeah. it takes to do that, if I have to change it five times a year and there's version, you know, V 1.7 V 1.8, yeah. like I'm, I'm into it. I'm down for it. So That's awesome. But I'm, yeah. I'm personally on like version 12 over two years. <laughs> so um, minor tweaks, you know, little tiny minor tweaks yeah. and a lot of lab testing, working with food scientists. So, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. So very That's excited cool. keep, about that. Yeah. It keeps things interesting, huh? The kind of yeah. different project, including dry, dry goods. And yeah. And that's yeah. really creative. Honestly, it was just really inspiring to work on that and tweak and tweak and tweak. Mm -hmm. Um, that has been really, really inspiring to work on that. Yeah. So. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just as we, you know, kind of wind down, you know, talking about um, tips and advice for, you know, people that are just getting into the the breeding. Do you feel like there's been like a surge? I, I guess it comes and goes from what you've seen. But yeah. have you seen like a surge of new breeders coming in um, into the, the hobby? Or yeah, yeah how does that I mean, there's always new people. That's always a thing. Um, and I think that COVID probably helped the reptile uh, hobby a lot because people were yeah. stuck in their houses for two years. Yeah. So it, everyone got dogs. <laughs> everybody got dogs and yes, people were like, everybody got dogs. people were considering, all right, like if I can't do everything that I normally do, what is something I can do at home? I think yeah. that that birthed a lot of uh, new new reptile hobbyists like not just geckos mm -hmm. it's just not even that like people having pets is just up yes. a lot like yes. the pet industry skyrocketed from covid yeah it's crazy right yeah. yeah so i think that's probably a thing and then just over you know the lily <laughs> white gene 
brought a bunch of people because, oh, look at these things. These are crazy. And that brought a bunch of people. And now yeah. like everybody's searching for a $25 cappuccino at a, at a <laughs> reptile show. So that's yeah, bringing yeah. a bunch of, you know, uh, people that are searching <laughs> for a needle in a haystack. Yeah, and yeah. that's funny. You know, there'll always be these these events in gecko history that bring waves of people. Yeah. Um, it's a, do you see that as a good thing? Yeah, I think or it's is that great, annoying? Man. Okay. <laughs> I I think it's great. I mean, the thing is there's always people are always going to be have a hobby. I'm glad that they have the hobby of wanting to work with reptiles. That's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um how do how do you know, from your perspective, how do different budgets affect your projects? And as a new breeder, what should you aim for? Because I feel like when I was, when I first started, I was like, oh, $180 for this gecko is insane. Why would anyone, why would anyone pay for that much? And then, yeah. you know, I talked to you, I talked to other breeders and we spent like quite a bit, right, to kind of up the um, the breeding stock of what you want to do. And so yeah. um, I guess it depends, but from your perspective, what would be your advice to kind of newer breeders in terms of how to jump in? Yeah, I mean, it all depends on your goals, right? So some animals yeah. are not expensive to start. Yeah. Um, like, say, you want to work on, like, tigers. Okay, well, you can buy, like, the nicest tiger that exists for, like, 400 bucks. Um, yeah. But if you want to work with Exanthics, like, buckle up. Your first animal is going to be $10,000. Yeah, you know? that's crazy. So it yeah. all depends on what you want to start at um as mm. far as a project and it's not like one is a lesser animal than the other um yeah. just different things have kind of different upfront costs um mm. to start um so I, I guess budget plays into what what morph of animal you want to start with and how many yeah. years behind you want to be other behind others so, mm -hmm. yeah. so if you wanted to do tricolors, but you have a $200 budget, it's yeah, going to yeah. take you 10 years to catch up. Got it. Yeah. So yeah. it's or longer or you may never, you know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I've heard from other breeders to spend as much as you can on what you, this project that you want um, so that it produces things that you're able to, you know, um, that yeah. are nicer, that you feel are nicer, that you can sell at a higher cost. And that kind of, I guess, ups, ups you. Yeah, yeah, but of course, not everybody has that budget, right? And, and so. I always tell people, like, the most amount of money you possibly can, you should put into the stud males of the projects. Uh, the stud males. Because you're going to breed them to two, three, four females. That should be where the majority of your budget goes. Yeah, yeah. At least at the beginnings. Yeah. Um, that's always what I recommend is, you know, if you have two thousand dollars to spend on the project, I'd spend a thousand on a male and five hundred bucks on two females. Got it. So, yeah, you know, no, that makes sense. I'd re I'd spend double on the male, what you're going to spend on the females, at least when you start. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because that's the male that's going to kind of spread his genetics kind of through the generations. So, yeah, that's yeah, so. That's kind of how I would do it personally. Yeah. Yeah. That makes it. Yeah. I had trouble finding females for, for quite a bit. And so end up getting some females that you don't fully want <laughs> or you're not nice sure. The nice thing about. is, you know, and I, and I do this too. Like on my Dalmatian project right now, I'm put, I've got, I'd say my nicest animals are males mm. and that might just be Dalmatians in general, the the animals that are often nicest are males. I don't know, but yeah, and I, and I have females that say I have Dalmatian. I have males that are ten out of tens, and it's like the nicest females I could get are sevens. Uh, it's like, all right, well, I'm gonna breed those animals, and then yeah. I'm gonna grab all my holdbacks from that first year, and then my whole project elevates from there. Elevates, yeah, no, that so, makes sense. It's a matter of patience. Sometimes you do have to do that first year of like, eh, these females aren't quite what I Got envision it. as the end I game, see. but that's okay because it's like. Think about everything as in breeding geckos as ingredients kind of in the in the recipe that makes the dream gecko, right? Yeah. No, for sure. If, if you yeah. think about that, then certain you might, you know, certain animal might only be bred into a project for like head structure. 
Yeah, and yeah. other than that, they don't offer a lot, but that's the thing <laughs> that project really needs. So, yeah. um, man, but that will take generations again, the patience to yeah. breed that head structure into the lines with, along with all the other uh, characteristics that you want from other animals. Right. Yeah. So that does take a while. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So I, I guess that, uh, I would say in general, spend as much as you can, uh, without putting yourself into debt. Yeah. Like put yourself yeah. into debt for a gecko hobby. Yeah. Um, yeah. and put, yeah, I would prioritize projects too. Like you don't want to have one gecko of 10 different morphs <laughs> Get it. Yeah. and you have nothing to breed them to. Hmm. Mm. That's one thing I see some new people do is like, I've got one super Dalmatian. I've got one tricolor. I've got yeah. one, you know, yellow. I've got one pinstripe. Mm. It's like, well, what are you going to breed to what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just a mishmash of things, right? So there's some um, people that have, that have killed it on like small collections, but they were yeah. really, really strategic. Got it. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a great way to do it too. Yeah, just got to focus, right? Focus yeah, on the focus. project and fine tuning it. Yeah. How do you figure out what's good, um, good and bad in terms of? Are you looking for head structure? Are you looking for structure in general? Are you looking for the type of morph? Like what? You know, as a new person, you, you just jump into this thing. Um, what are you looking for, or is it all subjective? Um, I wouldn't say it's completely subjective. I think it depends okay. on what animals you currently have. Yeah. Um, like if you still think about things like ingredients, like what what do you currently have maybe this animal you buy the the base color is perfect but the head structure is lacking well it's like okay well the male that i'm gonna breed it to has a neutral base color but his head is amazing yeah. so that head structure issue on the female side is going to be negated so there's mm -hmm. kind of pros and cons um and you just kind of got away with what you have already and play to the strengths you already have um yeah i mean that's what i'd yeah. say and buying right. animals from breeders that have proven track records of having yeah. healthy animals animals that produce good offspring strong eggs all that stuff um is <clears throat> probably the most important is just buying from a reputable breeder and um, yeah yeah i don't recommend just like buying a hundred geckos from a hundred different people yeah, I'd say buy 100 geckos from 10 different people that you trust. Yeah, and that takes time in terms of looking at who's who's been around, who produces good things like that, right? Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, yeah, that's totally me. I was just on Instagram for hours. Like, even now, I'm just looking at different <laughs> types of animals. You're what in the obsession like? phase right now. Oh, man, like, I'm, I'm just looking at what's what, what is, you know, and then you begin to realize, oh, that, you know, the first couple of things I bought was kind of like, off because of this or this or this right they're still good yeah, animals but you but, learn right um, yeah yeah so so it's just i guess putting in a lot of time to research in terms of talking with a lot of breeders that are helpful and um i think that's uh yeah i think that's what makes it exciting too right just yeah. talking to a lot of people it's yeah, a yeah. it's a giant uh it's a giant science experiment that we're yes. constantly yeah. refining yeah which is exciting because everyone's kind of in their own uh, science experiment but it's it's so fun it's uh, everyone's doing it you know and then you know you can make it big you can make it small i think that that's what makes it so enjoyable it's yeah whatever you want to do with it you're able to um, yeah it's just fun, like so. a creative person's dream hobby yes so. <laughs> yeah yeah for sure um you know as we close out aj um what uh do you have any personal personal recommendations of you know other breeders or other resources that uh people can go to or is it just surfing instagram or facebook what 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 would you tell anybody who's just getting into the hobby like in terms of how to learn yeah. all this stuff um i would say to stick to people that are like small to medium sized breeders that are responsive that'll answer your questions because there, there's a mm -hmm. couple people out there that are big they might have nice geckos but if you send them an email they're not going to respond to you Yes, so, I've come across several of those. <laughs> yeah, so I would say like pick to somebody that you can talk to and ask questions mm. um, yeah. because the mm -hmm. animals are just as nice as anybody that's super yeah. big. Um, yeah. And yeah, just get to know your breeder of the animals you're buying, understanding mm. their projects, kind of where their head's going as far as 
those pairs or um, that project and kind of understanding what their goals are will yeah. kind of help you know, what am I going to use this animal for and how can mm. I kind of carry on or pivot from what they're doing? Um, and so, I mean, there's a million different breeders out there. I have a bunch of friends and I could just uh, plug all my friends, but I, you <laughs> know, I wouldn't say that that's the only people that produce good geckos. So I would yeah, say get sure. to know people, um, yeah. look at their content, look at their animals, ask for people mm -hmm. you respect's recommendations yeah. and go from there. I mean, I think it's a real small, you know, it's a small community of people that are like, have been doing it a long time. Um, yeah. and length doing it is not always like the, the meter in which somebody yeah. is a good person to buy from. Um, yeah, I'm not I saying that, mean. but longevity does help as far as experience. And if you've been in business that long, you probably are, you know, people do something right. People don't yeah. hate what you're doing. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 How I've done it is I've just, I, you know, as I was like looking through Instagram, just messaging a ton of breeders and then some people you could tell they just, they're, they just want to make that sale. Yeah. And uh, that's obvious. And then some people are there to really help. And I think yeah. there's more of that than the, um, than the former. And so, um, yeah. just talking to breeders and not being afraid to ask like, Hey, can you help me with this, this, and this? And then some people aren't as helpful. Some people. Yeah. Are, I mean, there's um, the reality is that we all start somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. And everybody's context is different. Like how you take care of geckos where you live versus where I live is totally different. I, yeah. I guarantee it mm. because you live in an area that is different weather than me and different yes. barometric pressure and all these different things, yeah. elevation, all these different things play into mm. how we take care of our animals. So I, I would say to people like ask, maybe find people that live near you when you're trying to figure mm. out kind of your care and everything, find people that are local to you. Cause if I read a care sheet written by someone that lives <laughs> in New York and I live yeah. in Southern California, they're not going to be yeah. the same thing. Or if I live in Florida and you live in Seattle, they're not the same mm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I would sense. find, I would also find local people too. Yeah. I think that's, visit their, visit their spots and yeah, and see visit how their spots or yeah. go see them at a show. Yep. Um, or talk to them on yep. Instagram and, and build yeah. relationships with people that are maybe operating <laughs> in a similar context and weather and all those different yeah, things. That makes sense. Too. Yeah. I've been to uh, a few shows and pop-ups and just, um, just talking with the breeders. I think that's a great way to do it. Getting their numbers and just chatting with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It just takes time. It takes time and energy. Just yeah. To and talk as, with people, as far so. as like resources goes, um, I think there's some good stuff out there. I mean, I think like a lot of YouTube videos, right? There's some good YouTube content. I think that yeah. Pangea's put a lot of good stuff out, mm -hmm. um, both products and, um, information. I think their care sheets good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just talk, talk to people that you like, you'll know who you kind of like vibe with from a business yeah. standpoint, just be like, Hey, what do you think about this? Or how are you setting up like your enclosures or different things like yeah. that. Um, yeah. Is yeah, that's what I did with you, AJ. I just yeah. asked you a ton of questions that were probably annoying to you. You no, wake up and fine. you see all these messages from me. <laughs> I'm like a naturally annoying to the maximum <laughs> question asker. So, okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> Maybe not now on geckos, but on like things I don't know much about. Yeah, if you're, yeah. if you're an expert in it, look out, I'm going to, bug the crap yeah. out of you so yeah yeah i'm, I'm similar <laughs> that way <laughs> yeah yeah all right dude well yeah it sounds good um thank you for you know taking your time and i know you're all, you're super busy but uh appreciate you talking with me a no-namer right <laughs> just six months in the into the gecko thing and you've, hey, you've got, a an name. Zero's got, got a name zero's got yeah that's right that's right <laughs> um but no thank you uh taking your time and just uh taking care of me and uh, watching out for me and just um, um, answering any questions I have. So really appreciate you, AJ. Yeah. Thanks, Harry. It was a good time and uh, hope to do it again. Yeah, for sure. Later, brother.